Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have an interesting freebie for you to play with for the weekend, and that is a collection of 380 pixel art texturing brushes from the Brainwash Gang. And these are basically, it's an ABR file, that's uh, an Adobe brush resource file, uh, standard for Photoshop, but you can use them in Krita, in GIMP, and as we're going to see today, in Affinity Designer. Uh, very handy, and I'll show you how to go ahead and use these. But first, a bit of an overview. Uh, they're available up on itch.io as a free download. It's one of those names your price type setups. Uh, they're a studios based Photoshop brush pack. They use the brushes in both 2D and 3D pixel games such as Damn View, Built from Nothing, and Friends Killing Friends. It is free for personal and commercial use. No need for crediting, uh, though both are appreciated. Uh, pixel Art Brush contains 382 different brushes classified by type of material. A master PSD um, detailing how to build materials using the brushes, so concrete, wood, etc. And this cool animated GIF that shows you each of the uh, ways you can use the brush. So you can see some of the example art for work created using these brushes. Uh, they're recommended for medium resolution pixel art, so creating it at two to four times the resolution of what you want to create. Um, preferable to polish results with some anti-aliasing, especially in noisy brushes, such as the ones found in the wood pack. Uh, brushes were created to ease the process, but are not enough to build polished textures, and pixel level work will usually require uh, to, to get nice work. So you're going to have to do some editing and touch up after the fact. Uh, but they are a very cool brush set. It's literally one megabyte in size. So uh, first, let's take a look at some of the games they used to um, that were created using these brushes. So Marmita, Friends Killing Friends, and Hold A to Drift are such gangs created by the Brainwash Gang. I see some of the some of the results there. So they're obviously using it for 3D texture work as well as 2D pixel artwork. And now let us go take a look. So here is that uh, animated GIF in frame by frame version. So here you can see like a base, um, nothing special going on here. And then we're using some of the brushes on top. So here you can see uh, glass mix brushes being used to add some details to the windows. Shiny mix, uh, I think for the same thing again. Uh, shiny mix masked highlights. Uh, bubble mix. Uh, bubble mix, mask highlights, noise mix, and so on. So you can see how all these brushes, so there you can see we're adding like a shiny mix brush on top of layering, overlay, dirt, scratches, highlights. So you see the bricks are getting more textured, the borders, we got bordering brushes in place now, and so on and so forth. Very uh, cool pack, and you can kind of use these to create all kinds of, and here we got patches being done over top. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how you use these files. As I mentioned, it is an ABR file. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new pixel document. We're gonna do this one at say 256 by 256 resolution. Uh, this, by the way, is Affinity Designer. Uh, it's also available right now at half price. Um, sorry, 30% off for Black Friday if you're interested. So you can see a, a typical project. Let's make sure that our, so our grid is turned on. That's good. So we're going to do pixel view here. I'm going to switch over to the pixel persona. So we're in pixel mode. Um, so you get raster and vector brushes. And these are all raster brushes, by the way. So you can see here, they're already installed. The brainwash pixel brushes. Uh, to install them yourself, basically find whatever the import mechanism is to import Photoshop brushes. Uh, in Affinity Designer, you can literally just send it to Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer, and it will automatically import them. Or you could come up here and do an import brushes and it's a PBR file you want. So if we go ahead, that was in my downloads folder, uh, brainwash pixel brushes like so, and just bring the ABR file in. I've already done so, and now you can see a number of those brushes in action. So this is a preview of what the brush looks like to paint with. Let me go over here to paint mode. And truth of the matter is, this isn't how you're going to work. You're not going to paint like, like a traditional paintbrush. What you're generally going to do is a stencil like so. So you basically use these to stamp onto your pixel scenes. A lot of these would be done for the grit layers, overlaying, and things like that. So let me just undo all of that. And we can go through and look at some of the brushes. So what you want to pay attention to is the actual thumbnail of the brush over here. Uh, your standard guy is this guy right here. This is your straight up I'm drawing in pixel view. So here you can see individual pixel level. By the way, Affinity Designer, even though it's a vector graphics application, is amazing for pixel artwork. So let's just go ahead and we can draw there in. So you see it's got um, anti-aliasing around our lines to make things look quite a bit better. So we zoom that out. You're going to see it looks pretty smooth. We come in, you're going to see it's got um, multiple layers. So this is a brush down for uh, working at the pixel level. Then you can see here we've got a number of different brushes uh, beyond that one. So literally that one is just a one by one pixel brush. And then we've got noise. So if you want to just add noise to your scene, that is what that kind of brush is all about. We got a number of different noises here. So again, just different shape noise brushes. Uh, then we get into this one here is uh, bold noise. So a lot more um, brush going on there, uh, more noises going on. And then we get down here, we've got um, 
Pincel Mustarin Ad. I have no idea what that means, but here you can see you can do like a, a blotch style. By the way, things can be scaled. So for example, using the uh, square parentheses, I can scale that down like so. You can also rotate using the arrow keys in Affinity. So if you want to place things otherwise. So these are designed to work at a certain resolution, but you can scale the brushes down as you need. That's also the same as coming up over here and changing the width of the brush in action over here, if you wish. Uh, so that is that one. We're gonna come down here. We got uh, various different patches. You can start using an overlaying on top. We've got, uh, I think we're still in patches. Got a number of different patches. Uh, let's go down here. We're going to start getting into some of the dirt stuff. So this one here is oh, another patch. But again, kind of handy. So if you're doing uh, an overlay or grime like this, but let's say you want to do um, like lattice work or, or um, you know, um, ivy or vines or something hanging down from the top. Oh, we could do is come in here. Uh, let me go pick a color. Oh, no. I'm on my color swatches. I'm going to switch to the Copic ones that I installed. And let's do like a green. Like so. So you could take a brush like this. We could rotate it 90 degrees. Like so. And we scale it up a couple times. And then boom. So you can see how you could really use something like this for tiles. And let's just do a second one to give a little bit of contrast. There you go. So you can see how you can use these to quickly create a pixel art style um, details. Let's go back to black for our um, examples here. Go back to the brushes over here. So then we're getting into the, uh, these are concrete. So if we're doing like cracks in the pavement kind of thing, again, you can go ahead and rotate them, but you're also going to find you have a number of different concrete style things. So if you're making textured concrete, that's what those ones are good for. Come on down here a little bit more. We're going to start getting into, here we got, what are you? Uh, polish. So if you want to add a layer of Polishing in again, you can use them like a brush, but that's not really the intention of these things. Go on down here a little bit more. And we're gonna have, uh, I think this is like, yeah, earthy grass and dirt. So if you need to do uh, grass into your scene, you can do so like there. Obviously, you would uh, want to change the color of it as well. Uh, let's go down here. So we got some transitional ones as well. So, like, see right here, this is border dirt. So let's switch to a dirt color. Now it's the swatches. Let's go to a, like a light brown. And here's how you could do it on the edge of the scene. So let's just, like so, let's say we we're doing a tile. We use this to, you know, the periphery of our image. Like so, so in addition to the borders, we have, let's go back here to our brushes. Uh, so borders for all four directions. Again, we could do it each corner like this. Uh, we got one automatically for the bottom here. We could do that corner down here like that. So you see how you can start using these brushes to really start pumping out the um, the artwork. Then we got here, we got, if you're doing a wood texture, like so, easily create wood textures. We got a number of different wood texture options. This here is a wood mix. Here we've got soft woods. Uh, here we've got, uh, what are you? Come on, soft wood again. Uh, what do you got here? Bum, 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 brick. So if you need to add a brick texture into your world, that's going to make life very, very easy. Let's make that quite a bit smaller. Like so, so you can create brick. Uh, here, let's, let's just do a new, file new. And, oh yeah, we'll do 256 by 256, sure that works for me. All right, there we go. So we got our brick brush still. Oh, so I gotta switch back to my pixel persona. All right, here, pixel persona, back to the paint brush. And then again, over here, pick the style that you're working with. I do wish there was a, a nice way to search by name because as it stands right now, you're gonna have to basically come through these brushes and find uh, the particular one you're looking for. So here we go, single plate, pick you. Why am I not getting my brush? Oh, I'm in the wrong tool. All right, paintbrush, like so. So there you can see for creating those style effects. Uh, what do we got here? We got glass, so if you wanna add some uh, details on your glass. I think this is like your shine to add to your glass. So that would generally be done in white over top of a surface. Uh, nice selection of pixel brushes here. We got some here for grass. We've got some here for wood. We've got more grass going on here. And they just kind of keep going and going and going all by name. What you're probably going to want to do is take this pack and start organizing it by uh, what you're working with so that it's a little bit easier to navigate through what you've got. So you do things by like wood types and grass types and dirt types and so on. Uh, but you had a ton of really useful brushes in this pack. I think, what was it again, 340 or something to that effect. And the ones I really appreciate, the ones that I find kind of the most immediately cool, what are you? All right. Um, are these uh, the bordered ones? Like, uh, let me try and find one again. 
there's grass and dirt border ones, which would be really cool for doing um, pixel map terrain tiles. So let me just go find another one right in here. And I do think that brick is kind of cool. This one here is for stone or random bricks. So if you need to, you know, create brick wall in your scene or you're, you need to make a texture for bricks, uh, that will make your life quite a bit easier. I think this is more of a, yeah, here's a boulder brick mix. So you could actually interchange that. It's basically just changing the, the contrast levels there. Uh, we've got some here for uh, doing uh, metal plate. But again, where are you? There we go. So all these transition ones. So this one right here is a dirt border. So if you have uh, internal, like so, and let me just do a full, like if you had dirt like that, you could easily do an interior like so, but you've also got border ones for doing around the outside of a tile like this. And I, there are obviously ones for each of the four quadrants. You don't need to do rotations like I am, but as you can see, you can actually just rotate out and make the effect very quick. And using these brushes, this brush pack, you can create some really cool pixel art really, really quickly. Again, I would probably want to organize them into uh, subcategories. So instead of just being this one big category of brain uh, pic, uh, brainwashed pixel brushes, uh, you can actually come in here and move them and create your own categories. You probably wanna split them into categories. It makes life a little bit easier to work with. By the way, for every one of these brushes, um, in, in the case of uh, Affinity, you could double click into it and have control over how it works. There's the original texture uh, being used. So you can actually change uh, the way the brush is controlled. That'll be the same. There'll be an option like that in Krita, in GIMP, in Photoshop, wherever you're using these brushes, you should have fine-tuned control over how the brushes are used. Uh, but yeah, definitely a cool and interesting pack. Uh, again, you can see how they're actually used to create um, some very interesting results. So here we see light being used in. Uh, there is a PSD document that kind of shows you this process, but you can see how these all work together to create you know, compound layers to create, you know, interesting looking pixel art. Definitely a cool package I would recommend picking up, especially because like I said, it is completely free. So that is 380 pixel art texturing brushes from Brainwash Gang. Again, the only thing I would highly recommend is that you organize them to make them a little bit easier to find because quite frankly, navigating through 380 brushes is a bit challenging. Now also hopefully uh, your editing tool of choice has the ability to say just the thumbnail because the, the stroke is useless to me. And I tried to find an affinity a way to just show the, the thumbnail of the brush in action. And I couldn't find anything like that. But if your tool has that to just show the tip, um, I would recommend doing that and make it a lot easier to navigate through and find the brush you want. Uh, but again, I'd probably recommend, recommend breaking these out into categories if you're going to use them. Uh, but definitely a cool pack. And uh, thanks to the Brainwash Gang for releasing these. And hopefully you found that useful. Uh, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.